distractions. Today I'm going to work on this little chair that I got from a client of mine that had it on her back porch for a very long time. She said it was a children's school chair uh, from many years ago and uh, it's been in a little bit of disrepair. So we have a couple things we have to do to it. Um, this middle piece has already been warped and wasn't even on when I got it. I've already taken off the side pieces here. And as you see, it's been a little bit painted. When I got it, I wasn't quite sure what we were gonna do with it. So uh, my little one, my youngest one, decided he wanted it to look like an ocean. So he went ahead and painted it and now he's tired of it. So that means it's back to me. I get to do with it what I want. So I think I'm gonna take some of this Roy Cycled decoupage tissue paper, which is fantastic. I love these colors. I'm feeling like the weather's turning. It's um, hopefully gonna get warm again one of these days. So uh, I'm making flowers and bees. I got this paper here from my big box uh, hardware store that reminds me of a honeycomb. These are peel and stick tiles that you can put in your backsplash. Um, so I'm gonna give it a try. I have no idea what I'm doing with these, but we'll figure it out. And uh, I think I'm gonna paint this in some milk paint. I have some Homestead House milk paint. Um, I have another chair, a rocking chair that I did a while ago in uh, this mustard color. And I think that'll go nicely with this paper. So um, anyway, stay tuned to see what that looks like. And then in the middle here, I'm gonna come up with some sort of contraption or other to um, put a, a, a pot down there, a planter. And then hopefully it'll be beautiful and fabulous and won't it all look like a toilet. So first things first, I'm going to get to cleaning. Okay, you see I added some more color here. This, uh, because the majority of my decoupage is gonna go on the top, uh, front and back, all I did was seal this with some um, stain and finishing oil from Fusion Mineral Paints. It's in the natural, so it's really clear. Um, it should not yellow, but it doesn't really matter because it's yellow anyway, so more color for me. Uh, I'm gonna take my, my decoupage here, and I was looking at this beautiful paper. And I don't really want to play around too much with the design. I don't want to mess it up. Um, I'm a little afraid I will. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this center section here and use that here on this side and then something similar on the back. And I love these bees. So these bees might, they just might move around. So anyway, um, I'm going to decoupage it and cut off the parts that I don't need. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to eyeball it here, my scissors. I'm just going to eyeball it to get it where I want it. And then I get to move it. I think I like this part right here. This, just like right at the bottom there. And then up to here. So, give myself a little bit of wiggle room. You could very well measure this if you wanted to. I uh, am not particular, that particular, but I'm doing this kind of stuff. Because I'm gonna end up making more of a raw edge anyway, so um, I'm just gonna measure this. Measure this with my eyeballs. I think what I'm gonna do when it's all when it's all done, I'm gonna seal it again. But I might seal it with a white uh, stain and finishing oil, so that it has just a white uh, a white wash over all of it. Because I have a couple of different colors going on here, and this might the white might just bring it all together a little bit more, and just give it a little bit more dimension, and some some depth. Okay. So, I have a sheet. My hands are black because I was working on something else earlier. Um, yeah, so this looks like it'll fit perfect. 
So I'm just gonna take my decoupage, or I'm sorry, my, my Mod Podge. I don't always use this. There's a couple of different products I use, but this is the one that I grabbed first. Um, I don't think my brush is gonna fit in here, so I'm just gonna stick some in there. Woo. Cardboard always makes a good palette, and you know, I'm so cheap, I use it anywhere. So, just put this on here, do half at a time. That way I have the flexibility to move it a little bit if I need to, which I probably will. All right, so I'm just gonna line this up. I'm gonna get a little bit more on the bottom over here. You can use any water-based sealer or uh, any top coat for this kind of stuff too. All right, so I'm gonna line up my, I kind of want the bottom not to be so crisp, so I'm gonna let the bottom overlap a little bit, so that'll give me plenty of room. I'm gonna smooth it down, and I'm gonna do this side. And normally I would use my brayer to, to push it down or saran wrap, but I just use my brayer for black paint. Um, so I don't really wanna mess with it too much because and it's probably a little still a little bit damp still but you can use saran wrap you can use your fingers as long as you're gentle with it and just smooth it out and again i want this overlap because i i don't want a very sharp edge i'm going to come back and i'm going to sand that off once it's dry and you can see my underline, my underpainting here. I hope you can see that on camera. On oh, my underpainting, so it's white in the middle, or whitish, and then uh, a little bit of the yellows on the outside, just to give it a little bit of a halo. Because this paper's thin enough, you'll be able to see it through the paper, which is a really nice, um, a really nice touch. So it's really difficult to work with decoupage paper with the expectation that you're not going to get any wrinkles just give it up give it up right now you're going to have a wrinkle but you can get them out or you can work with them so it shouldn't bother you at all really so just push through here try to get your bubbles out try to get your wrinkles okay looks like the front dried pretty well we're going to do the back and think because it has these these boards I think what I'm gonna do is just fill this in with decoupage paper and then freehand paint around it so that it looks continuous and I think I'm just gonna continue right where I cut out you'll see the, where the front part is and then I think I'm just gonna do this little piece right here right in the middle and then I'm gonna freehand paint around it to blend it in really well because I do like the blended look um, so do the same thing, sort of eyeball it up. I'm gonna crease it a little bit up here so I know where to make my cut. Find my scissors, because you know, I lose things so easily. And it's basically the same size as it was on the other side, so I'm just gonna follow through on that. I always try to cut a little bit more, a little bit more of an overhang so that you can trim it back. You can always you can always fix it. Nothing nothing we do is beyond repair. So how did this go? Like this, okay? So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take some decoupage or some Mod Podge and get that on there. And then I think I'm gonna come back and cut this cut this out here so it fits nice and snug in there. All right. I still have some of my leftover color that was on here before. I did go over it with my milk paint, a couple different colors, but I liked the little Mexican tile that was in the back, or Latin tile, I don't think it was Mexican. All right, and since I like this edge here, I'm gonna make sure I butt that up against there. It's not that big of a piece, so I didn't do middle. Just 
do half at a time, just do the whole thing. But when you do the, the middle, if you do half and half, it is a lot easier because then um, you can smooth out the, the bubbles, the wrinkles a little bit better. But it's a small piece, so there's not a whole lot of wrinkles here, which is fantastic. You have saran wrap, a little plastic wrap, you can rub that on there. Be very, very gentle. This paper is thin. If you tear it, it's no big deal. You can always fix it. Just make sure that this can go straight across like that. Yeah, I think I'll do that. A little bit more, tiny bit. top a little bit before remember so I'm just gonna do the same sort of thing just wrap it a little bit and then I can come back and distress as I need to Here. A little bit more, more glue just to get in these little corners because I want it to get in there nice and snug. Just the side of my nail there. Same on the other side, just to seal it in. Make sure it doesn't want to go anywhere. I'm gonna switch to my larger brush, and then I'm just gonna let it dry. I'll come back and sand it off, and smooth it down. Make sure that I have full coverage. And once this hardens, it'll be a lot easier to cut away, trim away, sand away, or blend it in any way I like. One of the best things I like about decoupage is you could use this almost like a base paint. You can use it for anything that you like um, and come back and just layer on it, and layer, layer, layer until your um, creation is, is done, until you have it the way you like it. It's beautiful as it is, don't get me wrong. So go ahead, there's the, you see there's the top, there's the front, nice and dry that we did earlier. I'm gonna go ahead, let this dry. I'm gonna come back with water and a small brush and tear that off a little bit so that it is more ragged than straight. Who knew you could use water and a paintbrush with scissors, huh? a little too tricky, you just put a little bit more water. Pulls right off. Come back and 
that to put a little bit of glue on the bottom here. Just a big brush still. Also take a peek at it underneath. All right. We'll let this side set up. Come back. Make sure it's all smooth on there. And if not, we'll keep working on it. I had to bring this little gal inside because it was getting cold outside. So I brought it in and then it warmed up and now it's cold again. Anyway, so work on this inside you can see everything dried it's got some little bits here that I'm gonna just sand off with some sandpaper this is 220 grit sandpaper or 240 I'm sorry 240 um, I'm just gonna sand this little bit here if you go in one direction it won't tear as much it will take it take it off nicely And then I'm going to even out um, some of the little bits that are standing up. So when I seal it, it will all be down together when I seal it again. So we'll do that. On each side. And then I have this part here, this little flap here that um, I have the overhang from. And I'm just going to cut that off. I'm going to trim it. I have my speed square. You can use a ruler, any kind of sharp edge, uh, anything that will work, and my handy dandy craft knife here. So I'm just gonna hold it up against there so I have a straight line. And then just slice it straight down and voila. So some of the glue stuck to it a little bit. But you can see I have a pretty straight, straight piece there. And a little bit of glue up the paper but that's okay because I'm probably gonna end up painting this and touching this up anyway um, so if I can't get it off with uh, just my, my little craft knife here I'll just paint over it really because I, I like the texture anyway um, and I can blend it in it's really no big deal so let's see here let me smooth this out a little bit more and then what I'm gonna do is I have some paint that matches this off-white color and then this green. I kind of like that. So I think I'm gonna just do a little bit of that around here and then um, I'm still gonna keep this yellow because I really do like the yellow and the green that I have in the milk paint. Um, I like that. I like that combination. feeling around for any rough edges, anything that I may have missed. Who wants a chair with rough edges, even though no one's going to sit in it, but anyway, I don't want a rough, I don't want a rough chair. So I am going to put just a little bit of paint on, um, on the back here, just to blend it in a little bit better. I didn't want to really want to mess around with trying to decoupage just this little sliver right here. Um, so I figure I can blend it in and uh, no one will know. Except for you. Shh, don't tell them. Shh. So this color here is an off-white. It's sort of creamy. It's like a tan. Um, it's by Fusion Mineral Paint. And it has great coverage. Look at that. It just covered right over that pink. So I'm just going to put one coat of this on. 
was afraid to do too much milk paint by the paper just because there's so much water in milk paint and I didn't want it to um, loosen up the decoupage, um, loosen up the Mod Podge or the glue. So that's why I'm cho choosing to do, do it this way for now. Gonna try to feather it in just a tiny bit. And I'll come back with my other, my darker color. This is just a little artist brush that I just took out of the package because my regular paintbrushes are way too shameful to show on camera. I know some people are really good about washing them, taking really good care, putting conditioner, putting hair conditioner, putting all kinds of salves and um, all kinds of things to keep them clean. But uh, yeah, no, not me. I'm, I'm really not, uh, not the best owner of paintbrushes, so. I apologize that I can't show you. Do as I say, not as I do. I can't show you the, the best way to take care of your paintbrushes other than to wash them um, and keep them clean and be nice to them. That much I know. So like I said, do as I say, not as I do. So some of that blue and the pink poked through here, which is what I wanted before. Um, I'm not so sure how I feel about it now because I feel like the pink and the blue might contrast with this lovely yellow mustard and neutral we have going on here. Um, just a spot back here. It has a little bit of pink in it. I'm just going to paint right over it. I don't know if you can even see it. I'm just going to paint right over onto the paper so that it looks like it's all one all part of it. All right, so that's that. And then I'm going to just add in a little bit of this darker greenish color. So it's a green with some, I guess, maybe like gray undertones. Um, it's no longer available, so I have to use it very sparingly because I don't know if I'll ever be able to find more. I'm just going to take a tiny bit on this brush. And because this is sort of abstract, I don't need to be too specific with it, too, too detailed. So my, my lighter color paint is a little bit wet still, so I'm just going to try to Blend it in a little bit. And I have my handy dandy old cloth diaper. Let's hear it for you, cloth diaper mamas. Um, they, they come in handy long after they uh, have worn out their, their original purpose. little bit more on this side. Can you see that? It sort of looks like my wall back here, doesn't it? I'm just dabbing it together. Again, nothing, nothing too exact. I like, I do like exact on some pieces, but not, not this one. This is not a uh, a piece for exactness today. When I do my geometric designs, yeah, that that's when it really counts. But for something like this to blend, to just keep it, keep it looking like it's all one big piece of pattern, I think, uh, I think this will work here. I'm just going to put a little bit of water on my brush, a tiny bit, just so I can thin a little bit of this paint out. I have this peel and stick tile I found at the hardware store. Um, it's supposed to be for backsplashes. I think I'm going to use it on this front piece of the chair um, because the shape of it reminds me of honeycombs. And we're going to add those bees that were on the paper. We're going to add those back to the, um, to the other piece. 
So I'm just gonna cut it. I already looked to see where it would fit best. So here's my line. So it starts up high and ends down in the middle. Um, but anyway, it sort of mocks the shape of this a little bit. I don't mind it. I think once I um, have a coat of the white that I was going to put on to bring it all together, I think that'll, that'll make that even more subtle. What I'm going to do now is take one of these little bees. I'm going to take this little tiny bee here, and I'm going to cut it out, and I think I'm going to decoupage it right here. This little, this little bare area here. So you'll see it gets really translucent. Don't look at my nails, don't judge me. They're terrible. And I'm just gonna tear it just a tiny bit. See that? So that way when I put it on my piece, it won't look like it's been exactly, like another piece has just been put right on it. It'll look a little bit more organic. So I don't want it to be too, too sharp. I love sharp edges, but again, with decoupage, um, and in this piece in particular, I'm going for a look that's a little bit more rustic. Let me see. Um, I think I'm, I still think I'm gonna put it over here. Yeah, I think that's good. I think I'm gonna have to turn around a little bit so you can see this better. I think I'll try to get it at an angle. Just put a little bit of my decoupage medium here and around the same shape. It's also great because this is clear. So even if I get too much, it's not gonna make a huge a huge difference as far as the design goes or anything. It's not going to mess anything up. I'm happy with that. All right, so there's a very sharp edge. That was the uh, the edge of the paper. So if I want to use that to my advantage. I can put it like that. Maybe have my leaves come over a little bit more. Um, I don't know if I'm that adventurous. Let's see. Remember, I can fill a lot of this in with paint just so that it blends really nicely. So it goes on the inside. It's on this. The only thing is it's on the same edge as my B. So I don't know if I want that much, but it's it's plain on the back. Hmm. Okay, that's what we're going with. Yep. Okay, easy enough. Decision made. Do a little section at a time, so if I need to adjust, I can adjust it. Let's hope these wrinkles aren't too severe. All right, and this is long, so I'm gonna come back here. So I have that part stuck on. Do my side here.
All right, so we're gonna take this and put it here. Trying to wrap around the corner. It's not as hard as you would think. As long as you can get the front, the main part that's flat, as long as you can get that down straight, and you're good with this, with the sides. The undercoating, the underpainting helps as well because they have so many different variations. So the last thing I did to this piece was put some white top coat on. It's a white, I think it's an oil-based product, but just to sort of bring it all together and make it a little bit cloudy so it doesn't look um, too disjointed. Um, I did not seal down the top seat yet. I haven't figured out if I'm really going to keep it like this or not, but the final piece is this pot. I have the bee that matches and uh, I did some decorative molds on the side of it, and this will be my welcome planter. So, anybody wants to come and visit, this will be your E at the door.